I feel I do my best, but they don't. Let me ask you a very fair question. What do you do successfully? Quickly. Readers, if I were to give a top three list of the fan bases I'm hardcore part of that are technically older than me, they'd be in no particular order. Star Wars, DC Comics, specifically Batman, and Ghostbusters. When it comes to Ghostbusters, however, I learned a long time ago that what initially attracts me to the franchise isn't necessarily the Ghostbusters themselves. I mean, yes, now that I'm in my 30s, I can see the relatability in how Ray and company represent the working class and how they're constantly getting dicked over by bigger organizations and discredibility, despite the franchise being first and foremost a comedy-focused vehicle for comedians and comedic actors. But even to this day, that's not my driving force regarding why I love this franchise so much. I love Ghostbusters not because of the humans, but because of the lore. <laughs> Specifically the lore around the villains. I didn't understand the legalities of someone trying to go into business for themselves and almost going bankrupt because of it when I first watched Ghostbusters as a kid. But I know how awesome Zool's awakening and her possessing Dana Bear was when I first watched that shit. I didn't understand why everyone and their mama and them wanted to sue the pants off of the Ghostbusters after basically saving the world. But I knew that if Vigo got his hands on a human child to act as his new earthly vessel, that wasn't gonna be good for anyone. Then, as I grew older and gained an interest in storytelling, I realized that the way the lore surrounding these two movies I grew up with were very impactful regarding how I interpret story lore, climactic battles, and just villains in general. So when Ghostbusters the video game came out, I just Scrooge McDuck dived into any and all lore surrounding the supernatural entities I grew up with and any new ones that the video game introduced. And in doing so, I gained a whole new amount of respect for the villains of the film franchise. Gozer the Gozerian of Ghostbusters 84, and Vigo the Carpathian of Ghostbusters 2. However, with that sense of newfound respect, I also gained a sense of reality. And that reality is that though unique in their own right, Vigo, at his core, is in no way, shape, or form able to realistically compete with Gozer. At least, not without help. And I'm gonna explain how. So let's go over the overall backstory of Ghostbusters 2's Vigo in order to get said a better understanding. He's the very first entity that the OG Ghostbusters from the movie canon fought against that was once actually human. He was a sorcerer who found a way to prolong his life to over 100 years without experiencing old age. And as Dana explained further, He was also a lunatic and a genocidal madman. Because of that, his subjects did everything they could to off his ass on sight. How did they do it? He was poisoned, stabbed, shot, hung, stretched, disemboweled, drawn, and quartered. Ouch. I guess if you wanted a comparison to someone in geek and pop culture, imagine Dr. Doom ruling Latveria, but Doom is constantly treating the Latverian people like shit. Like Vigo, Victor is a genius who knows his way around technological advancements and is also one of the strongest self-taught magic users in the 616. But unlike Vigo, despite being one of Marvel's most dangerous villains, Victor actually treats the Latverian people he rules with decency and healthcare. Free healthcare. The Latverian people have free healthcare, but not the American people. Not even 616 Marvel America has free healthcare. Let me stop. 
Let me stop before I make myself mad. But yes, as Ray continues to explain, Vigo was finally done in by the people of Carpathia, but not before either performing a spell that allowed the transference of his soul to a large painting of himself in order to ensure his survival after his body died, or just being anchored to said painting after the death of his head. And once again, if you need a comparison, Think of Child's Play's Charles Lee Ray transferring his soul to a good guy doll and becoming Chucky, and needing to possess another human within a specific amount of time in order for him to properly walk the earth as one again. Which can also be compared to why Vigo needed Oscar to do so before the beginning of the new year. However, if you watch Ghostbusters 2 and play Ghostbusters the video game, there's a huge difference in his abilities regarding how they naturally work versus when they're enhanced. You see, according to the tabletop RPG that was created two years after the original movie, and thusly every other bit of Ghostbusters content that was created since the original movie, thanks to associating it with the in-universe text of Tobin's Spirit Guide, Vigo is a class four ghost with the abilities of a class seven by the time he's at his strongest. Class four ghosts can easily be established and identified as being the souls or ghosts of humans and usually have knowledge of who they were when they were alive. Because of this, disposal of class fours can be done easily if someone does the proper research regarding who the ghost was when they were alive and figure out things about them like their wants, their needs, and desires, if you want them to properly cross over. Because as we know, Tobin's spirit guide in universe was created years before Ray, Egon, Peter, and Winston decided to take on the paranormal like that of insect exterminators. That's gotta be some cockroach. Bite your head off, man. The thing about class fours, however, is that <laughs> That's pretty much usually all that they can do. <laughs> if it's not bound to something, like Vigo is bound to his painting, it can become corporeal and basically live out its life as if it were alive, and if no one ever tries to help them handle their unfinished business or forces them into their ghost form to properly bust them. Now, it's clear that Vigo's abilities in Ghostbusters 2 way surpasses that of a regular class four ghost. What he's able to do reflects that of a class seven, which is what Gozer is, and is unanimously considered to be the strongest class of paranormal entities across every iteration of Ghostbusters lore. They're usually associated with gods and demons, are exceptionally powerful, and the traditional ways of either exercising or busting ghosts won't necessarily work. Class fours are in fact capable of reaching a threat level similar to class sevens, but only if there is an energy source they can draw power from in order to do so. And in Ghostbusters 2, Vigo had such a source in the form of slime! What? It's a river of slime! Now, all of us Ghostbusters heads know that the reason why the slime in Ghostbusters 2 was so powerful was because it was reacting to and enhancing the emotions of the citizens of New York City, both positive oh, baby. and negative. You ignorant, disgusting blob! And the more emotions it absorbed, the more capable the slime was to open up paranormal gateways to allow ghosts through and animating objects it interacted with throughout the city. It's because of the psychoactive properties of the slime that Vigo was able to use it to his advantage and grow his power level from that of a class four to that of a class seven, and even start to manipulate it enough to have it encase the museum he was being held in to make sure the transference of his soul into Oscar's body was uninterrupted. But if that slime didn't exist, <laughs> Vigo wouldn't have been able to have done anything. <laughs>
not constrict Janos into being his Renfield and grant him the paranormal activities he displayed over the course of his servitude, not be able to gain a strong enough hypnotic hold on Rey in order to possess him as a plan B, nothing. Like he's shown in Ghostbusters the video game, he'd just be a ghost that's trapped inside of a painting of himself, staring at people and making rude comments to anyone that decides to pay attention to him. Now, do you wanna know something that's even crazier? In Vigo's unaltered class four state, Slimer is technically more powerful than Vigo. Slimer is a class five ghost. And class fives don't have any restrictions to physical limitations and can affect the physical plane and those who reside in it because they're more than likely either the result of a ritual gone wrong, a manifestation of ectoplasm itself, or the soul of the humanoid it used to be that's so mutated to the point where it no longer can be associated as such. Man, Vigo really ain't shit without his slime, isn't he? <laughs> but I digress readers, your homework assignment for the day. Write in the comment section below what your favorite bit of Ghostbusters lore is if you're into it. Also, there's a very high chance that more of these vids of me geeking out over my trivial knowledge of the Ghostbusters universe might be coming out soon. So if there's any in particular that you wanna see me cover, let me know in the comment section below as well. Whichever one you decide to focus on, I'd love to know your thoughts. If you want to help financially support the channel, you can join my Patreon by clicking the card at the end of the video or in the link in the description down below, where you can also find a link to my merchandise store. Or if you prefer to give a one-time donation, you can find links to my PayPal and my coffee account in the description box as well. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and every other Friday. But until then, this is Redis 101, class dismissed.